Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 177. Problem number 177, part of it at least, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. I didn't finish writing it, so we'll, we'll finish it up right now. It says a three-digit number ends in a zero. So we have a three-digit number, something like something like uh, 580 or 760 or 340, something like that. It's a three-digit number with the unit digit being zero. It ends in a zero. We are further told that if the left and the middle digit, if the left and the middle digit are interchanged, the number, the number diminishes. by 90. The number goes down by 90. It diminishes by 90. If you interchange the left digit, which is the 100 digit here, and the right digit, um, rather the middle digit, if the left if the left and the middle digits are interchanged, it diminishes by 90. For example, if we have 580, 580 is going to become 850. Oh, if it's 580, so we know it's not 580. We know it's not 580 because if you were to interchange if you were to if the left and the middle digit if the left and the middle digit are interchange it does not actually diminish it actually goes up it actually goes up and of course it doesn't go up by 90 so it's definitely not 580 it's some other number of course we have to find but as you can see that's what they're talking about if you interchange the left digit the 100 digit that is the 100 digit and the, and the, and the 10 digit if you interchange them the original number goes down by 90. They further go they further tell us they go on to tell us that if the if the left digit, the hundredth digit, is half and middle and right digits are interchanged, middle and right digit interchange, the number diminishes by the number diminishes by 345. Question is what is it? What is that number? Find it. So in the second part, they're telling us that if we take the left-hand digit and half it, for example, if we have 800, 840, let's say, so it says that the left-hand digit is half, so 8, 8 will become 4, and the 40 will, and then middle and the right-hand digit, the middle digit and the right-hand digit are interchanged, which in other words, 40 will become 0, 4. We are told that in that case, it diminishes by 345. The original number goes down by 345. And again, we can tell right away that obviously the number that we're looking for is not 840, because in the case of 840, when we have the 100 digits and interchange the middle digit and the unit digit, the new number that we get is 404, and 840 minus 404 is clearly not 345. It does not go down by 345 because it's not going to end in a 5. It has to end in a 5. We need 345. So it's not 840, but that's the idea. Now, for those of you, for those of you, who have been watching these videos in its proper sequence, the algebra word problems, you will know that we learn these, these problems, we learn how to solve these kind of problems, beginning with problem number 65. Right? Problem number 65 was the very first time we solved a pro problem similar to this one, except it only had two digits. Then the next one we did was number 91, then 111, 122, then we did 168, 169, 170, and 171 and now we are doing problem number 177 what I'm trying to point out is that we have done these problems such as this such as this one on many different occasions what we have to understand here what we have to realize here what we have to uh, 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 show here is our if our is our comprehension our understanding of how to represent a two-digit number how to represent a two-digit number or a three-digit number using the language of algebra. For example, for example, if you're dealing with a two-digit number, let's say 45, let's say 45 here, or 34, let's say since I already wrote it, 
if you if you're gonna if you want to represent the notion of 34 by 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 the language by using the language of algebra by using an algebraic expression that is how do we do that if you were to use u to represent if you were to use a u to represent the unknown quantity unit digits we don't know what that is we have some unknown quantity and if you were to represent t to represent if you're going to use the letter t to represent the 10 digit you cannot just write tu tu in the language of algebra does not represent 34 if t happens to be 3 if 3 happens to be 3 and u happens to be 4 simply writing tu does it won't it won't do it it won't do the job because tu in the language of algebra means 12 in the language of algebra, this would mean 12. That's what, 12, that's what TU means in the language of algebra. How do we represent 34? That's the part we have to understand here. How do we represent 34? Well, why is 34 so cold? 34, 34 so, is so cold because it tells us how many tens we have. We have three tens. 34 has three tens. And it tells us how many units we have. We have four units. Problem is, we do not know how many tens we have. This is an unknown quantity. This is an unknown quantity. This is an unknown quantity. We're trying to find it. Find it. It's an unknown quantity, which we're going to use, which which we're going to represent with the letter T for ten digits. So, since it's an unknown quantity, it tells us how many tens we have. It is that's how many tens we have. T times ten. And this is how many unit digits we have. This is the unit digit. This is how many and how many units we have. We have four, which we're going to represent the letter U, which is also an unknown quantity. So in the language of algebra, a two-digit number is to be represent, uh, represented as t times 10 plus u times 1. Now if you happen to have 100 digits in the front, 734, now that's how many hundreds we have. That's how many hundreds we have. And if you're going to use some letter to represent the number of 100s that we have, if you're going to use a letter to represent how many hundreds we have, let's say h, we're going to use, so we, this is here, we have seven one hundreds, seven one hundreds. And if you're going to use letter H to represent 100, then a three-digit number, a three-digit number is represented like this. This is the general form. This is the general form of how one represents a three-digit three number. H times 100, because that's how many hundreds we have. T times 10, because that's how many tens, tens we have. And U times 1. Of course, we can, we can, we can write this in a little bit more for refined form little bit more of an elegant form, a little bit more of a simplified form. Instead of writing h times 100, let's write that as 100 h plus 10 t plus u. There we go. 100 h plus 10 t plus u. Let's make a note here. 100 h plus 10 t plus u. This is how we represent, this is how we represent a th three digit number. So we have three unknowns here, the h, the hundred, the t for the tens, that's how many tens we have, and u for the how many units we have. We have three unknowns, and since we have three unknowns, in order for us to be able to solve for these three unknowns, we must have three equations. Or to be more precise, we must have three independent equations. Simply having three equations is not going to do the job. For example, for example, if I'm looking for three unknowns, let's say I'm looking, I want to solve for, if I solve for x, y, and z. If I want to solve for x, y, and z, and if I give you three equations, the first equation is, uh, first equation is uh, x equals two times y plus uh, uh, and two uh, two y equals three z. The second equation I give you is two x equals four y plus six z. And the third equation I give you is three x equals we're multiplying it by 3, we're we going 1, 2, 3, so it's going to be 2, 4, 6, and 3, 6, 9. As you can see, we have three equations here, but these three equations are no good. These three equations are not going to enable us to find the value of x, y, and z, because these three equations are not independent equations. The second equation is simply 2 times the first equation, and the third equation is simply 3 times the first equation. 3 times, see, 1 became 3, 2 became 6, 3 became 9. These are not three independent equations. We do have three equations here, but they are not independent equations. So simply saying that because we have three unknowns, we need three equations is technically speaking not correct. It's not. It's 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 a it's a it's a it's a it's, 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 uh, there is a possibility that these three equations may not be independent. You have to spell it out that these three equations need to be independent. Do we have three independent equations here? Let's find out, shall we? The first equation that we have. The first equation that we have is here. It tells us that it ends in a zero. 
it ends in a zero. This is their way of saying that u equals zero. That's our first equation. u equals zero. So now u equals zero, it does not play any role. So way we're going to represent the way we're going to represent our three-digit number is 100h plus 10t, because u is zero. It ends in a zero. It ends in a zero. U is zero. Since u is zero, it doesn't exist. It's just 100h plus 10t. That's our first equation right there. U equals zero. So once you once you know that u is equal to zero, you substitute in, in here value of u. This this expression that we had for a three-digit number reduces to 100h plus 10t. So now we have two unknowns, h and a t. We have to solve for the value of h and we have to solve for the value of t. In order for us to figure out the value of the h and the t, we need two more independent equations. And the two equations are going to come from the next two sentences. Let's work on the first sentence. We need the room here, so I'm going to erase all of this thing. Remember, our expression is like this. So here's our number. 100h plus 10t. This is our original number. Now let's see the first second sentence. It says if the left 10 digit, which is the 100 digit, and the middle digit, which is the 10 digit, 100 and the middle digit are interchanged, the number diminishes by 90. Let's first find out how to write that number with the with the 100 digit and the 10 digit interchanged. So here we have h100. Instead of h100, we're going to have t100. For example. For example, if we had 380, 0 is going to remain 0, except the left hand digit, which is 3, and the middle digit, which is 10, digit, which is 8, 380 becomes 830. So, how are many, how are many hundreds we had, that's how many tens we're going to have here. And how are many tens we had, that's how many hundreds we're going to have here. So, instead of, instead of, instead of H100, we're going to have T100. And instead of T tens, we're going to have H tens. This is our new number. Is this correct? Is this equation correct? The answer is no. This equation is not correct. This equation is not correct because what we're claiming is that once we interchange the 100 digits and the 10 digits, these two numbers are equal. Of course they are not equal. For example, if we had 340, if we interchange the 100 digit and the, and the, and, and the, and the 10 digit, of course 340 does not equal 430. Oh, this is just a fluke that this is also uh, actually, it does not diminish by 90. In this case, it does. If we had done the other way around, let's do the other way around. This does not. If if the original number happened to be 340, and if we interchange the 100 digits and a 10 digit, the number does not diminish by 90, but rather the number increases by 90. It's just a fluke. It was just a fluke that it worked out that way. So let me let me write it this way. So if our original number was 340, the new number becomes 430. As you can see, what the hell? If the original number was 430. The new number becomes 340. As you can see, it diminishes by 90. It diminishes by 90. If the left and the middle digits are interchanged, the number diminishes by 90. So we cannot write it like this. This original, the new number does not equal the new number. The new number is 90 less than the old number because it says it diminishes by 90. So how can we write this as an equation? So we have two choices. Either we can add 90 to this number, and now they're equal to each other. Either add 90 to the new number that we formed, or we could have written it, or we could have taken subtracted 90 from the original number and written it like this. Take our original quantity and subtract 90 from it, and that will also do the job. Either one will do the job, obviously. Let's write the other way around because it looks better, because it's more crowded here. So let's add 90 to the new number. If we add 90 to the new number, now these two, these two quantities are equal because this is the original quantity. This is a new quantity, the new quantity has been diminished by the new quantity. The, the, as a result of that, our original number diminishes by 90. If our original number diminishes by 90, then if you were to add 90 to the new number, it will become same as the old number. Let's reduce it, let's simplify it. Enough talk, enough of the talk. This is just 100t plus 10t, 10h plus 90. Here we have 100h plus 10t. I'm going to pick up speed here. We have 10 t here. We have uh, we have 10 t here. We have 100 t here. Let's bring the t's to here. It will become negative 90 t. Here we have 100 h, and here we have 10 h. Let's bring the 10 h here, and become 90 h. 90 h minus 90 t equals 90. You see how simple it is? It's a multiple of 90. Let's divide the entire equation by 90, and what we get is h minus t equals 1. 
In other words, the diff 100 digit happens to be one more than a 10 digit. That's our, that's our first equation. We need one more equation to solve for us to be able to solve for the H and the T. We need a second equation, second equation, uh, second independent equation. And that second equation that we're looking for is going to come from the se last sentence of the, of the problem right here. Let's find out what equation we get out of this one on the top. I forgot to tell you that if you wanted to solve this thing on your own, if you wanted to give it a shot on your own, you should have done that. Always pause the video immediately after I finish writing the problem and if and try to give it a shot yourself. Do it yourself. You will learn more out more out of you will get more out of it that way. You will learn more from it that way by having done the problem yourself first and then compare your work against the work that you and I do together in a few seconds time. It's still not too late. You can still pause the video and do the second part yourself. See if you can come up with an equation for this one yourself. I'm gonna give you five seconds for you to be able to for you to be able to pause and unpause the video, okay? Set up the equation for the second one and solve it. Finish it up. Alright, the second equation says that if we take the left hand digit, if we take the one if we take the hundreds digit, the left digit, and half it, our hundred digit was H. Our hundred digit was H. So instead of H, we have half as many hundreds. Instead of having H one hundred, we have H over two one hundreds. And what else do we do? And the middle digit and the right hand digit are interchanged, then the number diminishes by 345. If you middle digit and right hand digit, remember the right hand digit was zero. The right hand digit was zero because it ends in a zero. So how many tens we have? We have zero tens. We have zero times t. We have zero tens. Because if we interchange the thing, and how many units units we have? Well, before we had zero units, it ended in a zero. But now since we're interchanging the ten digit and the unit digit, this is how many? It should not be zero times t, it should be zero times u because u is equal to zero. And this is how many ones we have. This is our new number, 0 times u plus t, h over 2 times 100 plus 0 times u plus t. And here's our original number. Our original number was h times 100 plus 10 times 10 times t. And technically speaking, it was 0 times u because we had, we had it ends in a 0. The unit digit was 0. That's how many ones we have. We have 0 ones, which is why we didn't write it. Now, are these two quantities are equal to each other? I'm not going to write this thing, this is silly. Are these two quantities equal to each other? The answer is no. It says it diminishes by 345. This original number diminishes by 345 when we do that. When we take half of the 100 digit, for example, for example, if the number happens to be 600 and 630, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to take, if the left digit is half, the left digit is 6. 6 is going to become 3. And the 30 is going to become 0, 3. That's what we're doing here. And if you were to do that, it diminishes by 345, we are told. Obviously, we can tell, we can, we can see right away that the answer is not 330, obviously, because 330 minus 303 is not going to be 345. It's not going to end in a 5. So that's, that's the end of the conversation. It's not going to end in a 5. The difference is 345. So this quantity, the new quantity that we get here, is 345 less, 345 less than the original quantity. How can we justify putting an equal sign there? The only way we can put an equal sign there, the only way we can justify putting an equal sign there is we, if we were to take our, our new quantity that we get and add 345 to it. Since, it, since, 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 since this quantity diminishes by 345, resulting in this quantity, if we were to add 345 to the new quantity, now it's, it's going to be the same as the original number. We have to work on this equation, we have to simplify it. We need the room, so we can erase this part. Let's, let's, let's do it together. I'm going to pick up some speed, I'm taking too long. 345 plus h over 2 times 100, that's just going to be 50h plus 0 times u is just 0 plus t equals, or if you want to look pretty, if you want to look pretty, I'm just going to put a 0 here plus t so that it lines up plus 100h plus 10t. We have a 50h here, we have a 100h here, let's bring this 50h, let's bring this 50h to this side. So 
So, and this 345 is just going to come down. 345 equals this 345 just comes down. This is just zero. Bring the 50H over here. 100H minus 50H is going to be 50H. And 10T minus the T is going to be 90. And now we can make our substitution. We can make our substitution. The substitute for t will be easier to substitute t because there are only nine of them. So this equation h minus t equals one tell, that tells us that t must equal bring the t to that side one to one side h minus one t equals h minus one. Let's put it in here. Let's let's, let's substitute. Let me show you here. We're going to substitute this equation right here in here. Oh, that was a that was a freaking mess, wasn't it? I could have done that. 50h plus. I shouldn't have done it such a lousy way. 90. We're substituting right here. 9 and t is h minus 1. Okay, open it up. 50h plus 9h minus 9. Bring the 9 to this side, bring the 9 to that side, 345 plus 9, 345 plus 10 would have been 355, so it's 354. 354, and uh, not here, in the next step. I need the room, so I'm going to raise this thing, it's getting too crowded. I need the room, you already have it. This was our equation that we're working with, which we substituted there. This is the equation, h minus 1 for t came from here. Okay, enough of the talk. Let's, let's bring 50h plus h is, is 59, 59h. Bring the 9 to that side, it will become 355 minus 1, 354. So h equals 354 divided by 59. 354 divided by 59. The question is, how many 59s, how many 59s do you suppose, I'm going to raise this part, we're done now. How many, how many 59s do you suppose 354 is going to have? It's very simple. It's very simple. We know it's going to be an integer because that's how many hundreds we have. We just have to figure out how many hundreds. Obviously, it's not 1 because had it been 1, it would end in a 9. It's not 2. It's not 2. Had it been 2, it would have ended in 8. This one ends in a 4. It's not, it's not 2. It's not 3, because 9 times 3 is 27. The unit digit would have been 7. We have a 4. It's not 5. It's not 5, because 5 would have ended in a 5. 9 times 5 is 45. It must be 6. It must be 6. It must be 6, because 9 fours are 54. 4, carry 5. Not 9 fours are. 9 6 are 54. 9 6 are 54. 4, carry 5. 6, 5 is a 30, 30 plus 5 is 35, voila. And all of this was a waste of time. I would not have done it myself had, had I been doing it for myself. It's a waste of time because it has to be 6. But there is no other possibility, obviously. It's a 6, obviously. H equals 6. H equals 6, which means T must equal, right here, T equals H minus 1. T equals H minus 1, which means T must be H 6 minus 1, which is 5. There we go. We found the number. 100 digit is 6. 100 digit is 6, 10 digit is 5, 10 digit is 5, and the unit is 0. Voila. The answer is, the number that we're looking for is 650. The number that we're looking for is 650. And at this point, when we get done with it, as always, when we get done with it, as always, it does not take, it does not hurt, it does not hurt to take a few seconds, to take a few extra seconds, 5, 10, 15 seconds, whatever it takes. It's a good investment of the time to make sure our work is correct, to verify our work. Let's, let's do it very quickly. What we're claiming, what we're claiming is that the number that we're looking for is 650. The number that we're looking for is 650. Well, the first, very first thing we know is that if you were to interchange the 10 digit and the 100 digit, it becomes 560. And the problem tells us that if you were to do that, the, num the original number diminishes by 90, which it does. It diminishes by 90. As you can see, the difference between the new number and the original number is 90. The second thing we were told is that if we were to take our number 650, 
And if you were to have the 100 digit, if you have the 100 digit, 6 becomes 3. And if you interchange the 10 digit and the unit digit, it becomes 0, 5. Let's see what the difference is. The difference between the new number that we got and the old number that we started out with better be 345 because that's what it tells us. It tells us the number diminishes by 345 if you were to have the 100 digits and interchange the 10 digit and the unit digit. Let's find out. 10 minus 5 is 5, 4 minus 0 is 4, and 6 minus 3, voila, 345. Our answer is indeed correct. It's correct because it agrees with everything that was said in the problem. Amen to that. Bye now.